In Climate Watch, oil rigs have often been highly criticized for their negative impact on the environment. According to the Ecological Society of America, there are currently more than 7,500 offshore offshore oil rigs around the world, and as they become obsolete, multi-billion dollar efforts have been proposed to remove them. But in a recent article featured in JSTOR Daily, scientists suggest that the rigs can actually be productive and part of the ecosystem, and repurposing them as ocean reefs could be a low-cost alternative. Freelance journalist Lena Zeldovich wrote that article, and she joins us here on set. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us about these oil rigs and the kind of impact they could potentially have on the environment, the positive impact. Um, so as you said, there's over 7,000 oil rigs out there in the ocean, different parts of the ocean. And when they were originally put in, they were put in to withstand pretty much anything, um, hurricanes, tsunamis, you know, all kinds of things. So they're sitting there quite firmly. Um, and uh, as we now are talking about, you know, they're outliving they, their age, they're done, some of them need to be taken out, some of them will have to be taken out soon. It is a multi-billion dollar effort, should we do it? So apparently, maybe not in some cases. Um, this rig's been there for 30, 40, 50 years, and in the meantime, all this fish kind of like came and you know, liked it and decided to live there because these areas are sort of protected. They kind of live within these towers, around the towers, all this new life kind of grew on these towers. And scientists, in some cases, are seeing this new diversity around these rigs. And they're saying, maybe we should leave them there or like cut them in parts and leave parts of the rigs there to keep this fish you know, living. So wait, why are they becoming obsolete? Are they just sort of getting old and sort of past their time? Um, in some cases, the oil is no longer there. We, you know, pumped everything we could. And now it's a question of, you know, leaving them there, which in most cases I think is against the law, against the regulations. Mm. So the scientists are discussing, should we be changing some of these regulations? Should we, you know, maybe look at how we can leave parts of the rig there rather than pulling them out of the ocean floor, which is another really costly and damaging procedure because you have to uproot everything. Should we keep them as this kind of like marine areas where fish likes to live? So what did you, in your, in your, because in your article you talk about how they've already become these successful habitats for some species of mm -hmm. marine life. And so what was it in particular about these oil rigs that drew the marine life to it? Or is it just that whenever there's anything in the ocean over many, many years and in the course of hundreds of years, marine life will ab ultimately absorb whatever is in their habitat, even if it's not natural? It's a little bit of both. So marine life would try to live in whatever it finds, but there's also some interesting structural aspects to this um, um, you know, towers, to these platforms. They kind of build, and I think scientists call them a jacket. So it's kind of like a tower, and there are these horizontal beams and vertical beams, um, and you know, and a lot of metal parts. And so what happens is marine life starts like attaches to these metal parts and forms little communities. And you know, within this structure, there's also enough of a safe place for different fish to you know, spawn, um, mate, grow, eat, etc. In some ways, you can think of these structures almost as a multi-story apartment buildings, because rather than having just like flat water, you have this sheltered space. Um, and usually, uh, rigs are there in. They're not alone, they're usually multiple rigs, so it kind of creates an interesting sheltered environment. Mm -hmm. So is this similar to, uh, we've seen sometimes, you know, uh, ships being deliberately sunk to create um, reefs. Is it a similar concept? It is a similar concept, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, but, the, but there's got to be a flip side. Like, if yeah. you change the regulation and you say, okay, it's okay to keep it's all or parts of these rigs there, what are the possible negative repercussions? Yeah, so everything comes at a price, so at least with caveats, and there's some caveats here too. So um, some people are concerned that if you change the regulations, it can open some loopholes to not removing rigs that maybe should be removed, like maybe some are leaking, for example. Um, it also um, can cause other issues. You know, now it sounds like drilling offshore is not really damaging the ocean, so mm -hmm. some people can make a point of, let's drill more. Um, and the last thing that some scientists are thinking about is that can it bring some invasive species? So if you have some species that are sort of floating through the water and they have nothing to settle on, you know, they don't settle. But if now you, if you give them some space to hang on and settle, they might. And there's just not enough data. There's just haven't been enough research done, but it might be a concern too. 
It's really fascinating. And yeah. I think that, you know, one of the, it's just the message that's reinforced every time uh, we talk to reporters or scientists who do stories like this that try as we might to damage this planet, and we are doing a good job of damaging this planet, the yeah. planet might actually be stronger than even humankind because it does absorb all of the damage that we inflict on it yeah. in a way, and it may take hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, but you hope that the planet will be here long after we're gone and yeah. after we're done yeah. messing with yeah. it. It actually <laughs> sort of really made me think about this push for alternative energy yeah. um, and renewable energy sources, but then what happens to the hardware and the structure of the old energy sources? Right. You know, how do we get rid of them? Do we just let them rot? Do we let Mother Earth do what it does right. and absorb it? It's a good question. It, it, it doesn't seem that we've seen the same kind of uh, reef building, I guess, that, on ships that have sunk in the deep sea or whatever. I mean, whenever you... I guess it has people, to be where... It has to be in a certain area, These right? organisms would be where they would normally be... I think in some cases there might, mm. might have been some of the sort of fish communities building... I just don't know if scientists research them enough. I mm. haven't mm -hmm. looked into it in conjunction with the story, but it's something else to check. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Lena Zeldovich, thank you so much for coming by. Really thank interesting. Thank you.